Hi, I'm Justin Swain, and you can see me on Marvel's Luke Cage playing Detective Mark Bailey, and you're listening to my interview with Elaine Goodman on gogoodman.com.au. Your screen career started around 2006, and since then you've been in a lot of big shows and movies, and we're going to start with a brief overview before we go into a bit more specifics. You've been on Law and Order, Boardwalk Empire, The Blacklist, and Luke Cage, and movies like The Post, which I loved as well, I saw that. And what are the commonalities between all these big productions? Is it the vibe, the techniques, the budget, the equipment, the professionalism? Are there commonalities between big budget movies with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep and network shows with a 20 year history and Netflix shows based on superheroes, which is a, which is a huge draw card at the moment? Um, so what commonalities am I seeing between all yeah, those types but, of films yeah, and but, movies? Yeah, yeah, between yeah. all the big, these big productions. Um, well, I mean, f first of all, I think what's really cool is that a lot of those, um, you know, uh, movies and TV shows, they, they've all received a great deal of critical, critical acclaim, and they're, they're very, very well done and very well made. And there's, there's a lot of very, very talented people creating those, those types of, um, of those movies and those types of TV shows. Um, I'd say what the, you know, like the actual work on them, it's, they're all vastly different in regard to the approach to the work itself, which is interesting. I mean, in like doing the Luke Cage, you know, season, that type of work and that type of schedule and that type of set is different from like, say, the post in a major way. Um, so th I think there's differences in the way that the actual logistics of the work happens, but the end result for all of them, um, they're just, you're working with really talented people who just really know what they want, and that's what that's what's exciting about those projects. So, in terms of budget, does a big budget movie like The Post have a similar budget to a popular Netflix show? Um, I think so, but I think you have to look at it from from a from like a thirty thousand foot overview. Uh, the The Post had the budget is for that one movie, and that one movie is you know, almost two hours long and then you're done. I think that the, that the budget for this season probably equals the same budget for the one movie to post. So you're getting more episodes out of the season, but it's the same budget. All right. Did you get to meet Woody? <laughs> Woody? I actually, <laughs> um, funny story. I was going from Luke Cage set to the post to do a, to do a, um, Cost, a costume fitting and makeup test. And they sent a car to pick me up and they're bringing me from one studio to another studio. And on the way, I asked the guy, cause I'm going down to work with like Spielberg and Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks. And I'm like, what is that set like? Like, are those, are those like, you know, that's some big heavy hitters. How, what's their personality? And he's like, oh my God, they're so nice. It's, it's really a great set. And he was right. It was an amazing set. Everyone was very kind. Um, and on the way there, he goes, I actually ran into Tom Hanks in the bathroom. And, and I said, oh, that, that's pretty funny. He's like, yeah. And he, and he, go, he goes, yeah, I was sitting there, and, and he was coming out as I was coming in. And I said, hi, Mr. Hanks. He said hello to me, and it was really cool. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I got to set, and, of course, they bring me out of the car, and they're showing me around. And they go, do you need anything? I was like, I'm going to go to the restroom real quick. So I go to the restroom, and I walk in, and guess who's walking out? <laughs> It's Tom Hanks, and I run into Tom Hanks in the restroom. So that was the one time I, I met Woody. He was coming out of the bathroom, and I was coming in, and I kind of did a double take. I was like, no way. That what was, was pretty funny. What was your icebreaker? What was my was icebreaker? It, was it just I, he, he just walked by me, and I looked at him, <laughs> and, I, and I, honestly, he was in full makeup, so I actually didn't recognize him for a second. By the time I realized who it was, he had gone out. So that was that was it. That's cool. I'm glad you got who I, you got who I was talking about when I said Woody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving away my age, my young age. <laughs> you've got, uh, as you mentioned, you've got a regular spot on the hit Marvel Netflix series Luke Cage. Can you tell me a bit about your character, Detective Mark Bailey, before we get into a bit more about the series? Yeah, uh, Detective Bailey is a really fun guy to play. Um, he started off in the first season. He was kind of a tech guy, and he was assisting Misty Knight and some of her stuff. But he was mostly inside um, 
the office. He wasn't really out in the field that much. He was mostly just doing a lot of technical work. In the second season, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, he's promoted to full detective, and he's brought on to have a new partner named um, named Nandi. And Nandi and Misty have a past, and it's not all you know um, sunshine and roses. They're they're not getting along that great. And so basically, Bailey is caught between the two of them. He's he's uh, trying to be loyal to his new partner, and at the same time. Be loyal to his friendship with his with his older partner and be there for Misty. So in the second season, Misty, uh, Misty and Nandi and, and Bailey find themselves in some awkward exchanges, and Bailey's caught right in the middle of it. I've tried watching Luke Cage, and it, it's quite a dark series so far. I'm getting through it slowly. It's very serious, and there's not much humor compared to like a lot of the big Marvel movies. They all have that aspect of humor in them. Uh, and uh, yeah, like like the, those superhero movies. I'm getting through it slowly though. What drew you to the series, and what are some of the aspects that attract the viewers in your in your opinion? Well, I think that all, all of the Marvel series done on um, on Netflix are all really really well done, and uh, they are grittier and they are darker and they're more grounded. They look at them as like the street level series, so they're not you know saving. The world, they're saving a city. And the quality of people and the quality of acting and writing is really what draws me uh, to them the most. And especially um, uh, Cheo Hodari Coker really put together an amazing group of people. Um, he's the showrunner and the helm of Luke Cage. And he brought a lot of very talented people together to write some pretty poignant um, scripts. And I think that it, it's a Marvel show and it deals with superheroes and, and that fantastic and there's that element to it but at the same time it's so grounded and gritty and raw and, and touches with reality that it's really cool to see a show that not only has this really fun superhero element to it but also makes a statement and being a part of that statement and part of that world is a real privilege um, and they always give me great things to do and great things to say so that's really why you know it's just really it's a privilege to be a part of that a show like that is the pop culture superhero fandom something you like being a part of? There's tons of shows now, comics, conventions, online communities. How much how much of it do you see and take notice of? Um, just this past year, because you know Bailey's part grew some in the second season, um, I started to uh, del delve into that stuff a little bit more. So I was able to go to a couple comic cons this year and meet people that are really into the comics and. And it's amazing to talk to fans that they usually know far, far more about it than I ever did. Um, I try to, you know, educate myself as much as possible. But the fans are so um, into the little details. And it's really cool when they recognize a character like me that's like supporting and they go, oh, yeah, you know, and I really like this little detail and that little detail because they really devour like the entire, you know, the entirety of the season and get involved in the world. Same as you. Because you're acting in it, and like when I'm, when you're acting in it, you get to be in that world. And so when you meet the fans, and they're just as much into the world as you have been, it's really cool to kind of you know have those conversations and, and hear what their take is. So is so you you've got a supporting part in Luke Cage. Does that give you enough time on the side to pursue other projects as well, so you can keep that foot in the pop culture world? Yeah, I mean, uh, if if there are other projects that come up, I absolutely, you know, I can take them. Uh, but when the season is filming and and we're in a full filming cycle, you know, sometimes time becomes a little more, um, you know, a little a little a little less available. So so it all depends on like which episode we're working on and where we are in the season. Um, but it's but I mean, I actually got a chance to go to Philadelphia Comic Con this year, which was really cool, and I was actually the moderator and got to interview Mike Coulter and, and um, Theo Rossi, who play, you know, uh, Luke Cage and, and Shades. And so that was really fun because I got to interview them and ask them questions from the fans and talk and, and be all in the middle of it at the same time, which was really fun and cool. What's what's the strangest kind of fan question you've, you've been asked about the show? Like, how far in depth do they go to try and understand the character? 
I mean, that's like, why did you take your glasses off at that particular point in the scene? Like, were you thinking about something to do with Misty's upcoming bionic arm or something like that? <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I was like, that's really cool. I think he probably could have been thinking of that. But um, I was thinking I just needed to get better, you know, point of view on something. <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, like little minute details like that that I'd never even think of, like these amazing fans are picking up on, and that that's so cool. You came up with that example pretty quickly. <laughs> it, it's a very specific example, yeah. Now, you're also, crea- you're also creating your own movie called Penance. It's the first movie you've got producer credits on, and it's a crime thriller, which is, which is a similar kind of story to Luke Cage in that it's about... An, an ex-prisoner trying to turn his life around. Is there something that attracts you to the kind of police crime thriller genre? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a um, it's a gritty genre. There's a lot of truth to be told out of it and some amazing characters. You know, it's written really well by Kevin O'Donnell, um, who's also a producer on it. And, um, you know, it's just it, it's, it's been a very hard fought project and, and we've been trying to get it off the ground for a long time and, and it's, it's very dear to, to the writer Kevin and, and um, you know hopefully that'll continue to move forward and it'll get into theaters soon. So w- will you try and get it worldwide as well? Oh I mean if, get if it we on can Netflix. obviously. <laughs> yeah I mean that could be amazing if, if something like that happens. Um, you know it's it's written and, and, and uh, put in the world of, uh, of Boston um, and I, I grew up in Stoneham just outside of Boston and then in New Hampshire. So I'm a northeast uh, uh, kind of guy, a northeastern uh, American kind of guy, um, New England and uh, so is Kevin and um, you know that's kind of why those stories are I'm drawn to them. It, it's 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 a place where I grew up and there's a lot of interesting characters and there's a lot of grit there and there's a lot of um soul uh and interesting stories that that's told just out of daily life and i think that's where this story came from and that's why we want people to see it you know it's it's a little piece of our culture and in new england before your screen career began you did the actors actor thing and performed in and wrote uh, theater in New York. Are you someone that always has that theater bug in you? And what do you like about the New York theater scene? New York theater is is pretty awesome. It's definitely changed a lot, like since when I first got to to New York City. And what was really amazing was I was writing and acting and performing um, a lot uh, on stage back in like the early aughts. And there was a group of people that I ended up with um, because we all took a class with a guy named Wynn Hanman, who helped start the off-Broadway theater scene in New York City. And we would all be actors learning in the class, and then we started our own group where people would say, listen, I want you to show up with something new, some new material, and then give it to someone else and watch them perform it. And then we would write and watch other people perform our words and learn so much, and then all of a sudden just all of these shows and theater and amazingness came out of it. So a whole bunch of shows were produced out of that and I got to work with my peers and some pretty amazing people and watch them perform my work as well so we did like maybe seven or you know ten shows came out of that group of people um in the early aughts and like the early 2000s have you ever tried improv oh no I'm I, I wish I was more of an improv guy but no I, I'm not really I had a terrible I had a terrible improv group in New Hampshire uh, probably in some time in the 90s and and they were we were just god awful so I just stick I just stick to uh, writing uh, plays and movies and doing that <laughs> you need a script <laughs> uh, yeah I mean I, I could improvise in scenes and stuff but like doing improv comedy that's a that's that's pretty amazing I mean if I ever had the opportunity to try it again maybe but um, I was really bad at it <laughs> <laughs> everyone's bad at it when they start it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Back even further, as you mentioned, you were born in Boston, raised in New Hampshire, and studied back in Boston. What kind of exposure did you have to the entertainment industry? Was it more from your parents, or did you find your own favorite movies, shows, and performers? 
I'll tell you this. Where I grew up, I had absolutely no exposure <laughs> to, to the entertainment industry. It was a really small town. There were 32 kids in my graduating class that I knew since I was six years old. I thought you were going to say there it were was, 32 people in my town. <laughs> it, it, almost. That's what it felt like. Um, but it, it, I, I, it was a public school, and, and that's where I grew up. And, and so my big thing was I think I always – needed to use my imagination to to do something fun there there really wasn't a lot to do in the town and so i got into acting and that kind of opened up my world to being able to meet and interact with other people because I, I started to get involved in drama festivals and then going to boston to perform and, and that's how i met everybody outside of those 32 people i grew up with so <laughs> really that that's kind of my exposure to you know the rest of of art and, and entertainment actually happened after I moved out of Boston and came to New York and started working in Win Hammond's class, I met a bunch of actors that were working professionally, and luckily they took me under their wing and kind of showed me the ropes, and I was able to grow from there. So that that was really my exposure came out of the desire to be a part of all this, um, and I eventually found my way in. Do you remember the first movie you saw that kind of cemented your interest in the entertainment industry? Yeah, I mean, I was a I was a kid, and I used to watch um, the animated movie of The Hobbit when I was a kid, <laughs> and I thought that that was like so cool, like that fantasy world. And then I remember watching movies like The Lost Boys. Actually, I watched that movie a lot. I thought with like Corey Haim and Corey Feldman when they were really big and popular. I was like, it's like, oh, those are really awesome movies. And then I saw The Godfather. And and then Apocalypse Now and those movies and and um, the Star Wars movies and that's th those were movies when I was young that I was like okay that's the difference now like this is amazing cinema and you can experiment and create you know these incredible worlds here and and that's when I started getting really involved. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a little known movie called At Close Range that starred Christopher Walken and Sean Penn and it was about a, a rural town criminal. And that movie was very influential in, in the type of actor that I wanted to be. And if you ever have a chance, I'd check it out. It's an older film, but it's Sean Penn and Christopher Walken at their best. And they play father and son. It's, it's a great movie. Decent cast for a movie that's very that you said is little known, isn't very well known. I don't think people know about it that much now. But, I mean, Madonna actually did the soundtrack, and it was big. It was like in the late 80s. Um, but it's an amazing at close range. Right. And there's a couple more questions. You're in New York at, at the moment, so I'm gathering you spend a little bit of time in both L.A. and New York. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. So what do you prefer about both cities? And yeah, what, do you, what do you prefer about both cities? Do you have a preference between L.A. and New York, or do they both give you different kind of um, perspectives on the acting industry? I'm, I, I think I love New York because your the access to other people is so readily available. Like you can be in a bar in New York and like there can be all kinds of people from all walks of life. And you can be there with like hanging out with a movie star and also hanging out, you know, with somebody that just moved to the city. And you'll all be in the same bar in the same place. And there'll be very little, you know, boundary between that. You're all kind of in it together. You know, you're like, you're seeing people on the subway. You're like, you know, is that Toby Maguire riding the subway? And you're like, yeah, that is. So like, that's, that's New York. Um, whereas in LA, things are a little more spread out and that kind of being able to have privacy and to, and to kind of be, you know, in your car and, and meditate on things and, and the weather and, and just the sense of like, I spend more of my time in New York than L.A., so when I'm in L.A., it's usually for something really specific, and it's like a job or a meeting or something, and so there's more of a sense of feeling like vacation when I'm in L.A., and so just enjoying the scenery and the weather and, and the freedom of being there, that's kind of what I like about L.A. So those are the two cities, but the one thing I, I would say that is very true, and I heard this a long time ago, it's a minute in New York equals about an hour in L.A., like things in New York just happen much faster and LA just people take their time and th and that's cool that, that's the biggest difference why was Toby Maguire the first actor you thought of <laughs>
I, I literally saw Tobey Maguire on the subway. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it was like a long time ago when they were filming Spider-Man. I was like taking the L train and I was like, that's Tobey Maguire, like, <laughs> like sitting right next to me. It was in crazy. The, in, in the middle of shooting Spider-Man. So he would have been at like at, at his peak fame. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, like, because because sometimes it's quicker to take the subway. It's just quicker. <laughs> yeah. Now I also know that you're of English, Scottish, and Russian descent. Which part is your favorite? Which part is my favorite? English, Scottish, and Russian descent. You know, there's something in there um, that isn't mentioned, but I'm actually also part Native American. That's interesting. So I'll, 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 take, I'll take the Native American part. <laughs> Why? Um, it's, it's the oldest. It's been here the longest. I can only assume why you're not taking the Russian part, but what's wrong with the English and the Scots? <laughs> we'll walk away from that right now. I don't know. I don't know who could be listening. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Your great great grandmother from Central America might be listening, or I don't know. <laughs> um, and finally, where can people find you, and what's your relationship like with social media? It's always an interesting topic with everyone I interview. And as, because you're, you've got quite a lot of work going on, do you still have a lot of time to delve into it? I came to social media later than most. Um, and right now, Instagram, Justin Swain Official, is the best way to find me. I encourage everybody to find me on, on Instagram and reach out to me. You'll notice I'm very interactive with the fans. I find it so cool as a way to... Uh, be able to interact directly with people and you know there's different posts and like fans sending like artwork and stuff like that and i love reposting stuff like that and and um you know showing people what other people are doing and interacting so you can find me at justin swain official and definitely like feel free to reach out and talk um and then i have my fan pages on on facebook and twitter uh, you know, check that out as well. A lot of the stuff there, you know, is all kind of happening simultaneously across all my platforms, but I'm very responsive on, on Instagram. So feel free to reach out on Instagram. Why do you think you were late into it? Do you have, do you feel like you have enough time to do it or does it feel more like a chore sometimes to keep? Well, in I it? mean, I just, you know, the, the, the popularity of it and the, the, and the way that people interact on social media, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up with it. Um, and so now that there's so many people, um, reaching out and connecting in different ways, especially with like the Instagram stuff, I, I just find it to be so cool that you can connect with so many people so easily that way. And, and now that I'm, you know, I've gotten a little bit of notoriety, more people are finding me. So I'm able to interact with people more often. Great. Justin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. It's a really good interview. I'm glad I got some good stories out of you, especially about Woody. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge fan of Tom Hanks. <laughs> I've seen a lot of his movies, so and a lot of people have. So if you get to walk past him, you can just feel the glow off him, especially if he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, yeah. Uh, especially yeah, in the situation his talent rubbed off. Yeah, especially in the situation you saw him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool, no problem. I appreciate it. It was great talking to you. Take care.